Okay, very good. So I'm just going to delete everything now and just want to basically use this sphere maybe to make my first connection. Okay, and just want to make some copies of those connections. So I can just, you know, you can also just copy them together. And what I want to show you now is going to be something that is related to those wires that you currently see. So there are different kinds of ways that you can actually see those wires. Those wires just indicate that something is kind of dependent to each other. So you actually made a connection. The point is going into the base. So therefore it's actually, if I turn on that again, you can see that actually I get something at that location. And again, if I just would want to change that, I can just simply move those points again using my sliders. And the sphere is kind of dependent to my, uh, my point here. Now the nice thing about this is as your script grows, those wires can be or can get really confusing, right? So if I just take a bunch of primitives here, you can see that every time I want to just supply something here, uh, I have a lot of wires and this can already get kind of confusing at some point, right? And this is just a very basic setup. So the nice thing about this is that you can change the way that the wires look. And you do so by going to the input, right, of any component, click with your right mouse button, and then you can either disconnect it. You can just say, I don't want that connection to be there anymore, but this is not the case that we want right now. We want to say to wire display and you have the default wire display, but you can also have a faint wire display. Okay. And every time you select it, you can actually see the default way, but if it's faint, it's just a bit thinner and maybe a bit nicer in that case. Another thing that you can do is you can just simply go to wire display and say hidden. Now, this means that you do not see the wire currently. If you select it, you can see the wire again. But if it's deselected, you just see this kind of port sign here, kind of a signal going out. And that just indicates that this is actually getting a connection, but it's just hidden. And that will just make your script much more cleaner. Let's say this is kind of down here and it's dependent on that. You do not need to have a wire going through all the way. So again, and this is just the different way of how you could basically see that. So you have the default right? And I'm just going to hide this guy here for now. You can have the default, you can go again, right mouse button click, wire display faint, and you can go to say wire display hidden. Those are your three different conditions of wire display methods. So that pretty much is it in a nutshell. Now, obviously, there's a lot to speak about in about the components, but we will get to that as we dive into our basic settings here. The one thing that I might want to give to you more or less as starting, you can always just go here and see different kind of settings that you can have, right? But the most critical are going to be the display, which will just help you to understand what you're seeing. And also you have these different conditions of the script, which directly are connected to the things that you see in Rhino. So if I would, again, just go to a surface, go a primitive, take a sphere, I get the sphere. Now, if I press on the first icon, that means don't draw any preview geometry into Rhino. That means everything that you have drawn in Graspa is actually still visually available. But with this one master icon, everything will be displayed. Everything will be displayed. No matter what you have on your canvas, everything will be shut down. Okay. Then you will have this mode of wireframe. It will just give you a wireframe of your circle. So here I just see the seam of my sphere, similar, similar to what would happen in wireframe mode. And if I go to the main one, which is this red icon here, which will say draw shaded preview of all the geometry, right? And this green one is something that we have already seen. So if I have nothing selected, it will show me nothing. If I select something, it will only show me that component. So, and then you will have again, this icon here. So which this one, which will just show you the document preview settings where you can basically change the way that your geometry is shown as a default. So normally my geometry, if it's not selected, will be shown red. I can change that by taking this color, for instance, and or let me do it here. I can change that by just using this color icon here. And now my deselected geometry will always be shown yellow. That's just something that's up to you. I have never changed that, to be honest, because I was always kind of okay with it being red, right? But yeah, this is something that you can change, but you can also change the way that it, if it's selected. So if I want to select it, 
maybe it's going to be blue. All right, so if I select it now, it's going to be blue. So that's something that you can change there. That's only for those guys that really want to use this. I'm just going to let it to green again. And then the another one is very interesting is the mesh preview or the preview mesh quality. That's just if you're working with meshes or in general, if you want to make a high quality visualization, that's basically usually using a very low quality for how the geometry has been displayed, but you can always increase it if you want to find any errors maybe and you're not sure if it's related to the preview or the geometry, you just want to might check first of all the high quality way that you can see and you can also just edit those qualities and just go to pop up, change those tolerances to anything that you might find more as a qualitative feature to show, okay? So those are basically your basic information you can also just sketch here, for instance, if you want. No, that's just a sketching tool. If you want to do that, you can also just write a scribble. There's a scribble where you can just double click and write something and it will be appearing in your canvas. But that's all things that I will gonna show to you anyway. This is very useful. You can just use this as just a basic setting. If your script gets very large, you want to maybe just zoom that in and it will just zoom out to all of the extent. You can just put a named view editor. So you can just basically have different views, right? So if I want to have a view here, for instance, I can just say, okay, this unnamed and then go to my scroll down. I can just trigger back to unnamed. So that's very useful if you want to, if your script is large and you just want to have some very zoomed in features, that's how you can build that up. And obviously the most important thing would be then to basically save it. And you save geometry by doing the save the current file and this will launch a pop-up window and then you can just type in a name, have the right directionary and then just save it, right? You can also go to files and then have save or save as if you want to, okay? And you can also open new or uh, open a document. That's basically the gist of it. And now we can really dive into it because we have understood the basics in Grasshopper. And now we want to take those basics and expand on them and build on amazing logics. So I hope you're ready. I hope you enjoy the course and let's get started. I have nothing else to say. So see you in the next one. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please feel free to leave a comment, a like, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also note that this video is part of a 13 hour long online tutorial series called Algorithmic Skyscraper Design. You can find it on my e-learning platform, Design Upgrade. That is courses.design-upgrade.com. To get access to all online courses, just sign up and secure yourself an all access membership. Choose one of the many courses available with one new added course each month. In the Algorithmic Skyscraper Design, I will take you from zero to hero for practice-based visual scripting inside Rhino. Learn also to create advanced environmental simulations and design user interfaces with Grasshopper. So see you there and let us make some design upgrades.